What is up guys? Climax Combo back with another video. I am Licious. I am Checkers. And today we are going to do a Spy Family Builds video. We got a lot of builds today. We have four different kinds and I think we covered a lot of ground with them. Mm -hmm. We got the sweaty meta build that it seems to be the most popular at the time of this recording. We got an interesting combo build. Mm -hmm. We got a cool aggro build. And lastly, we have a budget build that revolves around upgrading the trial deck. Woo. So yeah, um, in this video, guys, we're just going to go over a sample build of like the deck we're showing you guys. Mm -hmm. Just going to go over the key cards in it. We're not going to go over every card in the list. Give you a general idea of what the deck is trying to do. Yes, because this is already going to be a pretty long video, I feel like. Mm -hmm. And if we did that, it's going to be that much longer. But to start things off, we're going to go over some general key cards that work in many of these builds. So the first one is the Zero Zero Anya. Amazing Brainstorm. Great synergy with the whole change mechanic of the set. And has great synergy with a lot of cards in the set as well. So really good. For this, for this brainstorm, I would say it, it is still the best brainstorm out of all the other options in the set, even if you're not really using the change mechanic. But we're only going to include it in builds revolving around the change for this video. We have a couple level zeros. These two are just really strong and can go in any of your builds and make them work. And kind of why these builds get pretty varied is because of these two. Just really phenomenal cards for getting you through the game and setting up your neck for your mid game. The zero zero Lloyd is extra good because he's a really good way to tech green in all your builds. Because mm, there's yes. not that many good green zeros, right? Yep. Yeah, so the Lloyd running four of those, like easy color fixing. This card, early play, two heals at level two on one card, mm -hmm. busted. Frees up your lineup to let you do whatever the hell else you want. Mm -hmm. So this is the fir first build we're going to go over. It's Choice and Pants. It is certainly the most popular build and probably the most competitive in the meta. It is going to be making use of the change mechanic the most. It is the level 3 Anya and the level 1 Fiona. It is a control deck because, because of the level 0 Anya brainstorm, you can hit some pretty high numbers with the changing. Uh, you can accumulate a lot of resources starting early at level 1 with a costless 1-0 attacker that can do a ton for you. And it also lets you check the top of your deck on both yours and your opponent's turn. Controls your triggers, make your stock a little cleaner and more manageable. Also control what damage your opponent is dealing to you. Pretty strong. And the Anya is just the most consistent uh, level 3 to kind of bring out and start changing. You don't need too many pieces to really make use of her. So she's a great card to pair with the level one Fiona. Here's a sample list. Um, this list, since it revolves around the change mechanic so much, there's really not much you can tweak with this build, honestly. Very tight. Yes, it's very tight just because of how change works. So this is, you could literally copy paste this and you'll be fine. <laughs> you'll be pretty much running what everyone else is running. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To talk about Anya, the main finisher, uh, it's very reliable. Level 3, it's the best way to kind of round out what your build is trying to do. It can heal and kind of get rid of climaxes in your opponent's deck when she attacks. So it's very good for controlling the pace of the game and making sure that you are pushing your advantage at, the, at level 2. And the level one, the only other, the only non level three card that makes use of the change mechanic it is 6k. It's a really strong card on its own. It pluses and it's pretty strong uh, in power. And with the Anya, if you're able, if she survives and you change back into her, she'll hit some pretty high numbers on attack as well. So overall, it's a really strong level one combo where these cards. Where these combos start to shine is when they change into their disguises. Uh, the Fiona becomes a bit stronger. Uh, she can hit 8-5 with two Anyas in the back row. And she also has a defensive 
effect. Uh, you can check the top three cards of your deck uh, when you get attacked. So that helps you move around your climaxes to lead to more cancels. Uh, and if not, you can always plan accordingly. Uh, you can pick what you draw into uh, in your next turn. So it makes it so you don't, might not have to clock. Or if you want to clock for all three cards, you can do so. There's a ton you can do with it. And it's pretty powerful. And the level three Anya is great uh, because it adds a card to your hand. You can grab climaxes uh, and pretty much dig through your deck if you need to and grab whatever you might need. And it, it's also really strong because of the change buffing. So it can hit 12.5, 12k reliably, which is pretty good. Fiona does work when she side attacks. So if your opponents can't get rid of her and have to side, they're in real deep trouble. Yeah. You mm -hmm. always get to look. Mm -hmm. So very, very good card. A couple of other good cards in this build. This is Sylvia. I don't really know why this card is so overloaded for a common. Mm. I mean, this card kind of does it all. It mills. It discards climaxes. It gets you more stock or by, and it can clean out your stock. This card is just kind of crazy for a common, so. Yeah, it's great. If you're running past, you just run. You might as well run this. And if you thought Zero Zero Anya was overtuned, next up we got her best friend Two One Becky, who which makes her more overtuned. The Beckys make the Zero Zero Anya brainstorm a fifteen hundred global, which is already super good. And if that wasn't good enough, the Becky can tutor or burn, which is even crazier. And yes, if you have two. Anya's in the back row. It's um that's 2k when you change, but if you have an Anya and a Becky, it's 2500 power, so it's only 500 power more. But do keep in mind the Anya's only give power when you change when you change. So if your Anya's die and you play them from your hand, if you have the Becky, at least they're 1500 power stronger than they usually are. Because do keep in mind they have to survive attacking. They have to be rested at the start of Encore phase to actually change. So Becky's good. Next up for the next two cards, uh, we got the 2-1 Anya event. This card lets you cheat out any Anya onto the stage. So of course, uh, you could cheat out the level 3 Anya. The ideal target is going to be the level 3 Anya. That way you can climax combo ASAP. And to ensure you get the event, you got this other 0, zero Anya right underneath her. Um, the on-play mill is already a super good effect, but that second effect is like the icing on the cake. You can literally just grab the event by discarding a card, and then you can sacrifice that Anya for, or you have to sacrifice this Anya for the event anyways. So it just makes the deck really strong because you can do all your Anya shenanigans at level 2. Mm -hmm. Very reliable. Yeah, the the added consistency is very important for the Fiona because she can't she can't really grab whatever you want. You're very limited to what you plus and add to your hand. So it ends up you end up only needing this Anya in your hand going into level two to actually bring out the level three, which is very nice. So overall, here is a way to look at the deck the numbers it can hit, the ratings we've given it uh, based on how it can function. It's pretty unique in the way that it works. Uh, it, the build will, is kind of clunky because of all the change. You need four card, four main cards and four change targets, and they need to be in the waiting room. So sometimes it can be a little hit or miss. So the consistency can't ever be that high, like super high. But the Anya with the Fiona hold its own. I feel like if you can set up the Fiona's with a Anya brainstorms, the deck will usually work itself. Yeah, it it'll usually, usually work its way there. Yeah. Then you're like chilling. You just really, like you said, you just need the zero zero Anya to grab the at level going to level two. Mm -hmm. And then you have a choice combo in your hand, and, and you're going. You know, you're yeah. good from there. Yep. You're yeah. doing what the deck's supposed to. Mm -hmm. So overall, it's just a really fun and unique deck. That's quite strong. For our next deck, we're going to be doing the Yoru Waifu deck. It's going to be pretty standard mid-range deck. It's going to be eight doors to use the 1-0 Yoru 
and the 3-2 your combos respectively. Uh, this deck really starts to pop off at level 2, and we'll get into that a little later. Um, and you can really change how you want to play the deck. You can either go really fast or kind of take it a little more slow. So here is another sample list using a lot of the good level zeros from before, the level zero on your brainstorm. Uh, this list has a lot of tech ones. The main goal is to bring out the level three Yor using the level two events, which is why we're maximizing on that. But uh, because of the nature of eight door, you can tech in whatever you want, whatever you might need, decompression, anti-level backups, you know, whatever, and set up your deck accordingly. This build uses Bond over Becky, just a quick note, because hand size can be an issue, and Bond doesn't need any hand size to get his effect off. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, keeps the color lineup more simple, since you don't have that much yellow cards to work with. Yeah, you kind of want access to green at level 2, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you need red, obviously. So mm -hmm. The main card of the deck, level 3 Yor, very valuable for what it does, pay 1 to burn four and be crazy strong on offense is very strong. Uh, and yeah, so this whole build is kind of trying to make use of it to the best of its capabilities. To get there, we have the level one Yor combo. Um, it's just a really standard card. It's great, or it's, it's fine, but the biggest Plus to using this is that it can grab the 2-1 events to set up more or a play yours at level 2. It's a shame she has to kill something for her combo. <laughs> yes, that is the, the downside of that. So the main goal of the deck is, like we said, to play the level 3 your early and start burning your opponent for 4. Uh, the event, you only need the event and a level 3 your in your hand, so it's actually pretty easy to set up. But it starts to wear on your hand a lot because you are minusing to get it out early. Uh, and you're just kind of hoping that it survives until the next turn, which is why you kind of need to know if it will. Otherwise, this combo is very all-in. But it's a very good combo. And the change target, uh, you can stock heal if you really need to, but you're already <laughs> low on hand, so... Not really ideal. Don't uh, forget, guys, um, if you want to combo the Yord, that's another hand because yeah. you got to play the Climax. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. The combo itself is light. You only need to pay one, and it's going to kill whatever you're fighting. It's lethal, 4K and 4 burn yeah. for one stock. Yeah. It's crazy. But, <laughs> but there are caveats to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> high risk, high reward for sure. If you really like your this is the build for you. Yeah. It can, the consistency is actually pretty decent because the one Oyor can grab the 2-1 event. Mm -hmm. um, it mills a lot just because of that combo as well and the other zeros. And the lethality is extremely high. Yes. Even if, you're, if you don't think your 2-1... If you don't think the level 3 Yor is going to survive at level 2, just hold on to them. Play three of them at level 3. Yeah. Go to town. I mean, that's still 4... Four damage, three damage, four damage, three damage, four damage, three damage. Yep. Still, it's still solid. It'll still and for one stock, so it'll still get you there. Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure. And if you want to be lighter on stock, you could also just start playing the events at level three. So there's multiple ways to go around it. So you don't have to go all in at two. You can always wait till three. So mm -hmm. then we'll always your approach it, but cool build. Mm -hmm. uh, Love your. Yep, this is the Yoru waifu deck for sure. Next up, we got this pretty interesting list. This is the husband and wife deck. It's going to be four pans and four gate. And it's actually a standby deck in disguise. It's going to be a combo deck. Um, the main idea behind this deck is you're going to be using the 2-1 Yoru gate combo to cheat out the level 3 Twilight from your waiting room, just like standby. Because... Twilight himself is very scary, and he has his own event that can cheat him out, but it's a little too slow. Mm. So, we think this is a little more cooler, a little more fun, and can be quite good. This is the list we are thinking. Tons of level 3s, all of the 3s that can kind of burn in some way. Uh, a lot of support for the level 2 Yor to kind of make sure her effect gets off. There's a lot of top check in the build, hence why we're running 
the your brainstorm instead of the on your brainstorm you can choose to run that one if you want lloyd or uh twilight to be a bit more of a threat at level two but the top check i think just works so much better with a lot of other cards in the build as well so start things off here's big daddy twilight probably the scariest finisher in Spy Family, hence his heavy cost, and hence probably why Bushi made his event a lot slower than the other two uh, to get off. And so yeah, we want to play Twilight as soon as possible and start playing his amazing Climax combo when we can. So this is the way we're going to get out the Twilight early. It's a 2-1 Yor. This card is pretty hilarious. You attack, you mill one. If it's a, a character, you stand by something from your waiting room, and like we said, you want to get out Twilight. So the main way we're going to kind of guarantee the level 2 your combo is with this 2-1 your assist, lets you ch check the top two cards of your deck, which at least guarantees one of the level 2 yours. But it's also 1k in front, which is nice to buff up your cards. You know, it's cool. Uh, and... If anything, we do run the level 3 Yor that burns and works with this level 2 Yor that can come out early. So you do have the option there if you would have the stock and the resources to do so. The Twilight will be played in the back row, uh, rested, or you can play them in the front. And since they're rested, they can actually change as soon as they're brought out. So they can change into this Lloyd and you just get to heal too, pretty much, is the goal. Uh, which is cool. <laughs> Next up, some other good targets you can bring out um, with the combo in case something's going wrong, you can't get out Twilight, or you just don't want to. Uh, you go, does this, this is the target for the 3-2 Yord, um, for that other 2 one we talked about. She alone is a good card. Um, un pretty much burn on attack, really strong, big body. The other good standby, the other good target you can cheat out is the 3-2 Anya and Bond. This card is pretty interesting. If you cheat it out, you're pretty much telling your opponent that if they front attack it, you're going to bounce it back to your hand. That way you can play from your hand next turn to get as good on play effects again. So if they don't want you to do that, they have to side against you. Which, of course, they don't want to do. That's a lot of that's one less attack for them. So uh, another card to consider cheating out. And we have a couple cards just to kind of get you there to level two. Uh, the first, they're both ways to plus cost in a without spending any stock the first twilight uh is made more consistent due to a lot of the milling and top checking in the build uh so you can actually mill like six cards with one card and you get to add something to your hand so it's it can be pretty useful when used properly um there is a bit of luck to it though as well as with the 1-0 anya She's a nice attacker at level one, and since you have a lot of high level cards in the deck, you have a higher chance to add one of them to your hand. So yeah, it's kind of enough to get there, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> it gets the job done. Here are some numbers for the deck. Overall, you just stay strong to level two, <laughs> but once you hit level two, you try to get two, two, one, yours with the climax combo out. Hopefully you hit two of the combos like they both are successful you bring out two twilights put them either in the back row or one in the front one in the back they come in rested then they change into lloyd and then you heal and then the one in the back is definitely going to survive if you put out one in the front one in the back you know the other one might die but if you put both in the back let's say you put both in the back they both heal next turn they both change into twilight you combo Boom. and they die. <laughs> nice suit. That's the idea. Or, you know, if they attack you, uh, you hit level three, play one more Twilight from your hand, and then boom, now they're dealing with three Twilights at level two. Yep. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool. <laughs> Heavily inspired by Gouda Azuki, if you guys know that deck. All inning on the high lethal combo. It's pretty, pretty fun. If Bushi won't give us standby, we'll make our own. <laughs> For our last build, this is going to be. Uh, our budget deck is going to be a trial deck upgrade. It's eight gold bars. It's going to focus mainly on the level three from the trial deck and the zero zero common Anya from the main set. 
Uh, it's going to be pretty aggressive. You want to be pushing a lot of damage with uh, trying to spam gold bars every turn. Um, the 0, zero Anya from the main set combo is really what's going to help you maintain your resources and ensure that you have a compressed deck. And level 3 is solid and it's going to get us there. Hope Hopefully we're going to close out the game with it. Here's the list. A lot of cards from the TD uh, are in here. Most notably, we have a couple double R's. The level 3 double R in green and the level 0 Lloyd. Um, you can easily swap out the Lloyd with probably the runners, the Onion runners, if you want to stick to more of a budget. But those are already the cheapest double R's in the set. So you can consider adding them to this build. It adds a lot of uh, strength to it. But other than that, a lot of cards are here just to reuse the level zero Anya combo over and over again. The main level three from the trial deck is going to be the family level three combos with the gold bar. It's a very standard finisher, pay one ditch, burn three on attack. Very standard, but still solid but there are a few there is another card in the set that we'll go over in a bit that really makes this card shine so this level zero anya for being a common is another pretty interesting combo and it's actually pretty good um for this type of game plan where you just want to spam climax combos over and over again it's really nice you just get to grab uh whatever level zero level one you might want and add it to your hand get more of these Anyas or get other way other cards that are going to grab the Anya for you and being able to ditch a Climax and grab anything is actually very good for setting up your hand. This is low key, the key card of the deck. It does it all. Mills, salvages, ditch Climax plus. Mm -hmm. It's really strong. And that's kind of like what we mentioned in the beginning of this build where the whole deck kind of revolves around you being able to get this Anya and ensuring that you get to constantly use it. Some other key points of the deck, once again, the 2-1 Anya event we talked about earlier in the Anya build. Uh, keep in mind, you can bring out any Anya and the 3-2 green trial deck uh, finisher that we talked about earlier has Anya in the name. So you can bring her out early with the event, which is super sick. Uh, next, we got the 2-1 Lloyd. This is the card that makes the level 3 family finisher really strong. It's a level assist and um, no. essentially, oh. Sorry. it's a level assist, and essentially, the big part here is that it makes it so when the level three attacks, your opponent can't use backups, which is really good. Pretty insane. Without the two on Lloyd, the level three would be really bad. <laughs> but with this, it makes it good. But yeah, those are the main points of the deck. A lot of these cards are to just kind of fuel that game plan of recycling your combo over and over again. It ends up being pretty high in consistency and you have a ton of milling, uh, a lot of costless milling. The power is really low early on, so you're not really gonna be killing your opponent's board, but hopefully you do enough damage to them early on and outpace them and finish them off with your TDs at level two. If you cheat out the level three, at level two, yeah. and you start comboing them ASAP, you might run out of hand size extremely fast. So just be a little cautious with it and just, you know, try not to go too all in at level two. Play mm -hmm. it a little smart, play a little more tempo based, maybe. Yeah. That way you don't run out of too much hand at level two. But yeah. overall, this deck's really simple, but it's actually pretty good. It is cool. It's a cool build for a TD for sure. upgrade. It's pretty sick. Yeah, for sure. And that is it for our Spy Family Builds video, guys. I think we covered a lot of ground today, Checkers. Mm -hmm. Four unique playstyle, four very sick builds. Woo! You could be as gimmicky or as sweaty as you want, as cheap as you want, or as expensive as you want uh -huh. with what we got here today. Hope you guys found this video very cool and helpful. Mm hmm. Guess we'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.